Hello, this is the Kinematics in the One Dimension, or Linear Motion, or Motion in the One Direction by Lettergram.net. All the books that I've looked at use at least one of these three to describe the same thing. They're all the same, though. Um, in this video, I'm going to quickly go over um, the kinematics, equ kinematics, kinematic equations and then the calculus version, which people who are not in calculus could just stop there. Um, basic idea in this chapter is displacement, right here, um, which is the change in x is equal to the x final minus x initial. So if we just look at a straight um, line, we can do x final, which is right here. Let's call that x final. And this will be x initial. Um, the way that we calculate this is we take x final minus x initial, and we'll get the change in x, um, which should make sense to you. Um, the easiest way to do this is to put x final minus 0 if we set x initial equal to 0, um, which will equal the change in x, which should just be x final. Um, this will be opposed to, let's say we do this, where we move 2 units. We start 2 units, we move to 5 units. And then let's say from there we move back to three units. So what we then do is three minus two, which equals one unit. Um, the idea behind it is the x final is then here rather than over here and we can just completely ignore um, the movement outside of that. Um, what we see next is going to be over here, which is the average velocity, which is the change in x, um, divided by the change in time over a given time interval, and that will give you the, your average velocity. Um, if we do the same thing, we look at it like this, and we go, you know, we start at, let's say, 0, and then we move to 3, and then we move back to, let's go right here, and call this 2. What we do is we take x final, and just completely ignore this portion over here, and we do x final minus initial, which will give us our change in x, and let's just say the time interval to, to do that is equal to 3 seconds. So we did, we moved 2 units divided by 3, since that's the change in x, divided by the change in time, since we started at 0 seconds, time initial is 0, time final is 3, it'll give us our average velocity would be two-thirds units per second. Um, we do the same thing for average acceleration. Um, uh, for this time, only this time, we're going to have a velocity change. So let's say we're speeding up, we're going at this particular rate, and then next time we just go like that. Um, the difference between those two, which is, I'm just going to use specific times now, the, cha the change in velocity is equal to velocity final minus velocity initial. So let's say we're going um, 3 meters per second minus 2 meters per second, and that will give us the change of velocity to be 1 meters per second. Now let's say um, the time, change in time, is equal to time final minus time initial. which will equal, um, let's just say that's, we'll set t final 
equal to um, let's just say this is zero and it took one second to make that change in this velocity. So we'll have one meter per second divided by one second. Which is equal to one meters per second squared. Now this will be our average acceleration because this is the change in velocity divided by the change in time. Um, now the calculus is a little bit different. Those of you who want to just skip over the next uh, minute or two, you can. Um, Okay, um, this is the calculus section of this um, kinematics equations, and what I'd like to explain is right over here. Uh, velocity is equal to the limit of t as t approaches zero of the change in x divided by the change in t, um, which is the derivative of x. So if you know you have a let's say a little graph like this, uh, if you take the derivative of that, you get some specific slope, which is the instantaneous over the change in time t is approaches zero, which will give you the velocity at that specific instant, um, which is, you know, the slope of a curve at a specific point. Now you should already understand this from calculus, if you've taken any calculus courses, which I sure hope you have if you're you know, trying to understand this. So, um, what I basically want to cover is how to do that in reverse. So, if you take the integral of, you know, some time, and we'll make this t equal to zero. So if we take the integral of zero t um, v t or dt, um, we should give ourselves a specific amount of displacement. Um, this will be basically the reverse of right here. This will give us the distance an object has traveled over a given time interval with a changing velocity, which is very useful. Um, if you ever take an algebraic physics, it is terrible. Um, so this will help you right here a lot, and so should this, because you'll be able to get the velocity at any given point. Um, now, if once you get the derivative of that, you should be able to also get the derivative um, of this term right here, which will give you the acceleration which is equal to the limit as t approaches zero of the change of velocity divided by the change in time or the derivative of velocity, um, which is the integral of zero um, to get the total change in velocity. This will equal change in t, change in v, this will equal change in x. And so if you take the integral of zero um, to t over the acceleration dt, you'll get the change in velocity. This will also be useful because um, once you get this, you can plug it again into this equation over here, and you should then get the change in x. So it's very useful. Um, that's basically it to cover this section. I'll probably post some more, you know, some examples or whatever. Um, all the content will obviously be downloadable at lettergram.org. I'll have a couple um, a PDF and a Word document for those who choose to download or view online, um, which will give you probably a couple examples and a little bit better explanation. Anyways, thank you for your time. Um, visit me if you feel like.